medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram COVID-19 update. It's been pretty well established that contracting COVID-19 increases the risk of venous thromboembolic events, basically blood clots, either in the legs or in the lungs. In just my own clinic, I've seen a number of patients with COVID in the past that have come to me not recovering very well. And when we did a workup using a D-dimer test to see whether or not they had clots going on in the body and realize, of course, that there's many things that could make a D-dimer elevated, when it was elevated in those patients, we went ahead and worked them up with ultrasound and also with VQ scans, which is a way of looking for blood clots in the lungs. And when I found those patients, we started them on blood thinners and followed them. Now, in a very small percentage of patients that get blood clots for whatever reason, whether it's COVID-19 or not, a very small percentage will develop something called chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, otherwise known as CTEPH. And this is despite the fact that they're on anticoagulants. Now, you would expect that if the number of blood clots were going up from COVID-19, when a certain percentage of those people with pulmonary embolism go up, that the amount of people with this thing called chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension would also go up. Now, this is a letter that was written last year to the European Respiratory Journal from a referral center in the United Kingdom. And it's titled, Rising COVID-19-Related Acute Pulmonary Emboli, But Falling National Chronic Thromboembolic Pulmonary Hypertension Referrals from a Large National Data Set. And here's the letter to the editor. They say here that chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension is an uncommon but significant complication of acute pulmonary embolism. There is a strong documented causal relationship between COVID-19 and venous thromboembolism. Despite this, we've observed a seemingly dichotomous reduction in the rate of new chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension referrals during the pandemic to our National Specialist Center. The Royal Papworth Hospital in Cambridge is the UK's only quaternary CTEPH center and captures all new diagnoses. Now, just so you're aware of what this is, basically, despite anticoagulation, the pulmonary arteries, that's the vessels that are transmitting the blood from the right side of the heart to the lungs, become clogged up with blood clots that are not dissolvable. The body does not break them down. Now, this is a rare situation. Normally, the body does break these things down, but in a small subset of cases, this won't happen. And many times the treatment for this is actually open heart surgery where they go through and open up individually these delicate and small pulmonary arteries and take out the clots. And here's an example that you can see where the surgeon went through and pulled these clots out of the arteries, like basically clots out of tree branches. And you can see how extensive it was in this case. And we'll put a link to the picture below. Going back to the article, we see here the last four years of referrals, and you can see that the number of CTEPH referrals has been fairly constant in black. And then the last quartile, and I believe there they mean to say March of 2020 to February of 2021, the red bar has dropped, and it's unclear as to exactly why that is the case. Of course, one possibility is that these patients took the hit from COVID-19 particularly badly and may have perished during the pandemic, and that's why the amount of referrals have gone down. Of course, that's pure speculation at this point. One of the things that I've been pretty surprised about in terms of talking to my colleagues is if you are concerned that somebody might have chronic pulmonary hypertension or chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, then the diagnostic test of choice is not a CT angiogram, but rather a ventilation perfusion scan. And that was made very clear here a number of years ago in this article that was published in the Journal of Nuclear Medicine, since this is a nuclear medicine test. And what they did here was they looked back retrospectively and reviewed the results of VQ scans and CT pulmonary angiograms performed on patients who had been referred to the Pulmonary Hypertension Service at Hammersmith Hospital between 2000 and 2005. And that was about 227 patients. And you can read the results and the methods of the study here. Specifically with the results, it showed the following. Statistical analysis showed that VQ scintigraphy, 
to have a sensitivity of 96 to 97.4 percent and a specificity of 90 to 95 percent. CTPA, however, which is the acute scan that is usually used in the emergency room when patients have acute pulmonary embolism, showed a sensitivity of only 51% and a specificity of 99%. That means that if somebody had chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, a CT angiogram would miss it about 49% of the time. So you really cannot rule out chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension with a CT scan. You really need to use a VQ scan if you're concerned about chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. Of course, as part of this workup, you would have an echocardiogram looking at the pulmonary artery pressure and if it was elevated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the results of this study showed that VQ scans have a higher sensitivity than CTPA in detecting chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension as a potentially curable cause of pulmonary hypertension. And of course, that should not come as a surprise to anyone who's familiar with our courses at medcram.com. In our Pulmonary Embolism Explained Clearly video, we go over the benefits of ventilation and perfusion scans and exactly how to identify those and where to use those. As you can see, we've got a lot of good reviews and you can be one of them. Join us at medcram.com. Thanks for joining us.